Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. I welcome you all to our Rajana short lectures. And today we'll be discussing about a new topic that is Asti Sharira. So these are the headings that we'll be discussing today, which includes the etymology of Asti, the definition of Asti, the function of Asti, and the types of Asti as per Susruta Sharira. So let's begin with the etymology. How the term Asti has been derived? According to Shabda Kalpadruma, Asyate idi Asti, As Kadin Mamsa Bindaraste idi. So these two lines explain the importance or the major explanation for the term Asti, which that means the Asti is that which is placed or pertaining within the Mamsa. Mamsa Abhyandaraste iti. So that the bones are covered by the muscles that we all know. So according to Shabda Kalpatruma, they have given a very simple explanation for the term Asti by telling that that which is placed or pertaining within the mamsa or musculature is termed as Asti. Then when we look into the Vyutpati, from word that uh, Asti has been derived. So here I have quoted two examples. Garbasi Keshas Masru Loma Asti Nagadanda Sirasnayu Thamani Redaha Prabradini Stirani Pitrachani. So when you study about the Shad Bhavas, which aids in the growth or development of the fetus, there the Pitraja Bhavas include Asti. So all the solid or solid matters which is existing in the body is considered under the Pitraja Bhava. And Asti is an important one among that. So, Asti is derived as a Pidruja Bhava among the Shad Bhavas. And, Slakshna Abhyam Mamsa Medobhyam Kharatvam Kadam Astishu. So, this explains the formation of Asti. So, Asti is termed to be as derived from the Medo Dadu. So, Slakshna Abhyam Mamsa Medobhyam Kharatvam Kadam Astishu. So, the Mamsa and Meda is further attains or condenses to form the sara or the core that is nothing but the asti. So that is another concept explained by Charaka Chikil Sastana. And when it comes to the definition, this is an important sloga that you should learn regarding the asti. Abhyandara gadei sare yadha tishtandi bhuruha asti sare stada deha griyande dehinam dhruvam tasmat chira vinashteshu Tvak mamseshu sharirinam astini na vinashyanti sara nyetani dehinam. It's a beautiful simile that has been told by Acharya Susruta to describe the importance of asti. So let's decode the sloka part by part. Abhyandara gadai sare yada tishtandi buruha. The term buruha refers to the tree and sara refers to nothing but the heart wood of the tree. Abhyandara gadai sare yada tishtandi buruha. How the heartwood or the sara of the tree exists in the middle portion or the core portion of the tree. Asti sare stada deha driyande dehinam dhruvam. Similarly, the asti sara is existing as the main core or the skeletal framework of the actual human body. And further, he explains that tasmat chira vinashteshu. Tvak maam seshu shariri naam. Astini na vinashyanti sara nietani dehinam. So here, the above simile has been further explained or further substantiated by telling that even though after the death of an individual, all other body parts which includes tvak, that is skin, mamsa, that is the soft tissues of the body, so all these will get deteriorated once the person is dead. But the astini na vinashyanti, but the asti, which is the core portion or the skeletal framework of the body, will not get destroyed or deteriorated just like as that of the heartwood of a tree. Even the heartwood of the tree is very strong, which won't degrade very fast. That's why we use it for making furniture and all. The same way, the skeletal framework of the body is so strong that it won't get deteriorated even after death. So that is how Acharya have depicted the concept of Asti and explained how important it is for the human body.
Next, we will see the another quote where Susruta have quoted about the Asti Radira in detail as Mamsa Nyatra Nibaddani Sirabihi Snayubistada Astini Alambanam Krutva Nasiriyante Patantiva. So this explains the definition as well as the function of the Asti. Mamsa Nyatra Nibaddani Sirabihi Snayubistada. So these are nothing but the structures which covers the asti. So what all structures are there? We have mamsa, that is the soft tissues. Sirabihi snayubistada, that means the nerves and the vessels for the vasculature, which are covering the blood vessels, which are covering the asti. So as you know, if you take the arm, we have muscles of the arm that is covering the asti, which is the humerus. Then we have many vessels which are running over it. So all this can be taken as the outer covering of the asti like the structures covering externally and astini alambanam krutva nasiriyante padantiva. So, all these structures which covers the asti are held together and supported by the skeletal frame formed by the asti. Alambanam means support. So, astini alambanam krutva nasiriyante padantiva. So, it helps as a structural framework which holds all these structures together. So you know that the mamsa has been attached to the different asthis and that facilitates the movement of the body, isn't it? So that is how the asti has been explained by Acharya Susruta. The types of asti. Etani panjavidani bhavanti tadyata kapala ruchaka taruna valaya nalaga samyani. So according to Susruta Acharya, we have five types of asti which are named as kapala, ruchaka, taruna, valaya and finally nalaka. So these are the five types of asti which we will see as individual astis here. So from these images you can make out the different types of asti. So let's determine which are coming under each categories. What do you mean by kapala asti? Kapala asti is nothing but which is flattened. So here, how can you identify the flat bones? Here we have the scapula, which is a flat bone. Then the hip bone, which is a flat irregular bone. Then we have the cranial vault, which is composed of many flat bones joining to form a cavity within it, which occupies the brain within it. Okay, so these are the flat bones of Kapalasti. Then Ruchaka. The term ruchaka refers to a ball and socket kind of attachment. So for that, the example is nothing but the teeth and the alveolar sockets. So here this diagram represents the ruchaka asti. Taruna asti refers to nothing but the small astis which is composed of cartilaginous structure. So like here, you can see the ribcage, right? In front of the ribcage, you know that there is a costochondral junction where the ribs will continue as the chondral part and that will be inserted to the that will be attached to the middle sternum. So these cartilages can be considered as under the uh, like tarunasti. Kapala, Ruchaka, Taruna and the next one is Valayasti. Valaya refers to encircling. So here, when you observe the same rib cage, you can see that the ribs are arranged in such a way that it covers the entire thoracic cavity, which forms a thoracic cage. So the bones which forms a circular arrangement around certain structures is termed as the valayasti. So kapala was flat bones, then ruchaka was the socket-like attachment of the teeth. Then we have taruna, which is cartilaginous, then we have Valaya and finally we have the Nalakasti where we can see the long bones. The long bones of the body is, uh, the body is considered to be coming under the Nalakasti. So let's have a closer look at the types of Asti and the examples given by Acharya. So, Te Sham Janu Nidam Bamsa Ganda Talu Shanga Shirasu Kapalani. So here Janu refers to the knee then Nidamba refers to the hip bone, Amsa refers to the scapula, Ganda to the thyroid cartilages which are coming in the throat region, then Talu refers to the palate, 
Shanga Shirasu refers to the cranial vault and these are considered to be coming under the Kapalasti. And Dasanastu Ruchakani that refers to the teeth which forms the socket-like arrangement in the alveolar sockets. That is nothing but the Ruchakasti. And we have Grana Karna Grivakshi Kosheshu Tarunani. So in the nose, ear and neck region, we do have some cartilaginous structures for the pinna of the ear. Then the nose, when it considers the nasal septum, half it is formed by the cartilage. So all these can be considered under the Tarunasti. And Parsha Prishtavarasu Valayani. So along the back region, the thoracic cage is formed by the ribs and the vertebrae. And they are considered to be the Valayasti and Seshani Nalakasamhyani. So whichever long bones which are existing in the body other than that is considered as the long bones. So this concludes the types of Asti. And these are the important things you should know about the Asti Prakara. So if the question comes as Asti Prakara, then you have to explain the definition and then go for the types of Asti. Like uh, the five classifications that we have told, Kapala, Ruchaka, Taruna, and Valaya, and Nalagasam. So these are the five types of Asti. And I'll conclude with the enumeration of Asti because there are certain changes when it comes to the enumeration of Asti according to different Acharyas. So the first one being we'll consider Charire Susruta Sreshta. So the Susruta's opinion, Acharya Susruta has opined that there are 300 asti in the body. And according to Charaga, there are 360. And Vagbada also joins with the same opinion that there are 360 bonds. And while the modern science, as we all know, it is considering only two not six bonds. What might be the difference in opinion? What might be the reason for difference in opinion of the number of astis? That is because the observations were totally different during the era of Acharya Susruta. So the reasons might have been that the inclusion of teeth among the bones and the inclusion of teeth sockets as a separate bone and the parts of bone being counted separately. For example, the different parts of ribs like Acharya would have counted as separate and the inclusion of cartilages as bones. So some of the cartilages has also been described as bones under the Tarunasti classification. So these are the reasons why there are difference in opinion regarding the number of bonds. In the enumeration, there are difference in opinion according to different acharyas. And when we compare it with the modern science also, there is a difference in opinion. So you have to think in that way because during that time they have uh, like done the dissection according to the Mrita Samshodhana Vidhi and they have seen the structures and emphasized the consistency of the structures. So obviously when the body is degrading or deteriorating, then there will be the remnants which are having more density will be like uh, staying back. For example, the bones and cartilages will stay back for a longer time. So that might be the reason why Acharya would have considered the cartilages also under the classification of bones. So this concludes today's session on Rasti Sharira. Thank you.